think our mic got taller or something. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you all for being here. Um, before we get rolling, uh, I want to wish Coach Kellogg and Coach Eilert uh, good luck as they get started. Men play at home tonight in uh, Coach Eilert's first uh, regular season game, and then Coach Kellogg kicks off his tenure tomorrow night. So uh, wish those guys, wish those guys and those teams the best of luck. And uh, when things settle down for us, look forward to getting over there and, and watching some basketball. Um, great night on Saturday. Um, again, I want to thank the the fans over here. I thought. Um, it, was, it had great energy in the stadium. I said that right after the game, but I want to reiterate that. I thought even in pregame, um, just a really good atmosphere from man trip uh, to the pregame uh, all the way through. Uh, appreciate that. Definitely definitely is a benefit. You know, this, this can be uh, one of the tougher places to play in our league. So appreciate our fans. I um, thought we played very well on, on offense and defense. Um, Practice and prepare well. Thought we earned the opportunity to go out and, and perform like we did on Saturday. Um, and I was happy. We, we got a lot of guys in on offense and defense. Played a lot of people and uh, and get some valuable, valuable experience. And I thought some of those guys really did a nice job. Uh, two things really disappointed in. One, the penalties, uh, especially the procedure penalties. Uh, we got we haven't had that issue this year. We got to clean that up. And then the second thing is what I'll start with on kind of the recap of the game. Uh, special teams, just very disappointed in how we performed on on our punt return unit. Um, you know, BYU's t- a punt team had struggled, and um, we got zero return yards out of our punt return team. Uh, we had two penalties on that unit, and just played really poor on punt return and then and then disappointed our kickoff Um, we didn't kick the ball very well Uh, we kicked short kicks with low hang time which makes it really difficult to uh to cover and we didn't tackle very well we didn't fit their return um so disappointed in special teams overall I thought our field goal team uh, really protected well. Mike continues to be good on kick on field goals. Struggled with kickoffs, but he was really good on, on with field goals and PATs. Um, and then in field goal block team, we continue to get pressure up the middle. I thought we affected the kick that they missed. Um, we just need our core players on special teams to play better. You know, we've got we've got a group there that start on multiple teams and and just didn't play well enough. And so we got to get those two the the both the punt return unit and our kickoff unit fixed, or we'll get exposed in that. Um, Moving over to defense, um, you know, the positives, we, we only allowed 67 yards rushing. And I think anytime you do that in this league, you're going to have a chance. And then into possession downs. They were 0-3 on fourth down, 3 of 11 on third. Um, we got a huge turnover right before half that we were able to turn into points. And I uh, thought we flew around, tackled better, uh, fit the runs better. Um, you know, it was good. I thought, you know, very reminiscent of how we played uh, during that three-game stretch there. Um we still got to improve our pass rush. I think we ran by the quarterback too much. Uh, I thought their their kid did a nice job getting the ball out. Had a real quick release, and um, but we but we got pushed by the quarterback too much. So we got to get that corrected. And our zone drops were better, um, but we're still off our landmarks. So we still got to be more disciplined in that. And and then I thought we we had two interceptions to hit our hands, and we've had a little bit of an issue on that. Uh, we've got to be able to catch those balls. Um, offensively, the positives: three hundred thirty six yards rushing, and you know. It, I forget how many plays we had, but we only had five negative yards, you know, um, the whole game, and, and and that's good. We had 30 first downs, held the ball for 35 plus minutes, really controlled the game there. Um, you know, we've got improvements to make. We got to fix the procedure penalties, um, the red zone. You know, we had to settle for field goals. The one right before half really didn't have a choice, but uh, the other two kind of shot ourselves in the foot. And we were just okay on third down. We've been better. Um, and then the most important thing that we got to continue to work on, we left a ton of pass yards out there. Uh, fundamentally, Garrett's got to get better on some things throwing the football. And uh, But we left some passing yards out there. Um, to, to wrap up that, players of the week, uh, offensive lineman of the week, um, played extremely well. His best game of the year. Uh, continues to play at a high level, but this was his best game. Um, he grayed out 96%, five knockdowns, 53 production points. Um, and Zach Frazier was the o- O-lineman of the week. Special teams player of the week. And, and this really could be a guy every single every single week. Um, he, uh, he plays his position as well as anybody we have on our team. And I think he's one of the best in the country. Uh, and that's our long snapper, Austin Brinkman. Uh, was perfect on all the snaps. He's got elite speed and location. And um, – he he's he's as good as anybody in the country. Uh, the defense player of the week. We we had several guys that were that that could have been our defense player of the week. 
thought Lee played well. Lockhart played um, back the way he was playing early in the year. Uh, ben Cutter played his best game. Uh, but this guy really uh, came back strong from a, from not his best performance a week ago. He had five tackles and really communicated great, had great energy, and that's Anthony Wilson. Offensive player of the week, uh, Jaheim White, 16 carries, 146 yards. Uh, and he's been he's been really good with the ball the last two weeks, and he played better without the ball, pass protection, run blocking, those type of things. Um, our uh, we give a blue collar award. These are guys that may don't show up in the stat sheet, but played really well offensively. Brandon Yates played three positions uh, in the game, played both guards, uh, played center, came back after getting banged up a little bit early in the game, and, and he's getting he's he's playing at a high level and made a he's gotten better every year but he's made a huge jump since last year and then and then the other one on offense was Preston Fox um really uh made some difficult catches the the touchdown was special but just blocked and did a great job on the perimeter played almost every snap and then the two the two guys on defense I talked about Ben Cutter he played his best game he had a, a sack a tackle for a loss uh made a tackle on kickoff um and and Definitely his best game. And then the other guy, this guy's playing his best football of his career in special teams and on defense, and that's Jalen Thornton. Back-to-back weeks has made plays on the D-line. Uh, scout team uh, players of the week on offense, it was Sean Boyle. Uh, he's getting better, and uh, he did a really good job giving those guys um, a look last week. And then on defense, DJ Cotton, a uh, kid that walked on here that's going to be a player for us on the D-line. And then uh, on special teams, this guy does a nice job. Uh, his brother is a – a high level swimmer here as well and that's Derek Burlitz and so uh, uh, those are the those are the award winners for the week and so kind of turning the page to uh, to Oklahoma and another week another really tough test uh, this time we're going on the road um, to play one of the top programs in the country and it's on primetime TV again uh, it's one it's it's at one of the top venues in the country to play and so our guys will be fired up uh, great respect for coach Venables um, Went against him a number of times now, and uh, uh, really good person. Uh, he's done really. I think his defensive work speaks for itself, and and he's got that program headed in the right direction. When you look at them, special teams wise, what sticks out is um, their specialists are good. You know, they went out and got some in the portal, and and they're really good. Uh, their kicker returns. Um, he, he's got a strong leg. He's been really good on field goals. Uh, they use a right-footed and a left-footed punter, so we have to really pay attention uh, to who's in the game there. They're dangerous at returner. Uh, Farouk at, is a really strong receiver, and he's really good at kickoff return. Uh, he kind of – he's a big kid, but he runs like a running back. A really natural player. Uh, offensively, uh, Levy does a great job. He's been doing it at a bunch of different places now, uh, UCF and Ole Miss and, and uh, now at Oklahoma. They play as fast as anybody in the country. So uh, alignment's going to be critical. Uh, they move their pieces around. You know, uh, Drake Stoops is a guy that he, he's kind of their jack of all trades. He does a little bit of everything, and he's playing at a high level right now. Uh, they're balanced. Um, they're always good up front. I think Bill um, Bill does as good a job um, from a recruiting and then developing those guys. And it seems like he has a couple NFL players every single every single year. And uh, their right tackle will be a first round pick. This is the fourth, and I think this speaks to our league. People don't you know don't talk about this probably, but this is the fourth first round pick on you know potential first rounder we're going to play on an opposing team's offensive line and. Uh, and so, um, but Bill does a really good job. They're they're a group that challenges in a lot of different ways with RPOs and and uh, and in the run in the pass. And then you know, last but definitely um, their most important cog is their quarterback. You know, Dylan Gabriel. Uh, he's played at a high level. He can run. Um, he's got a really quick release. Um, kids won. You know, both at UCF and at Oklahoma. So uh, a lot of respect for him. Defensively, they're multiple. Uh, they're going to put pressure on you, uh, mix up the coverages. I think that unit takes the really takes the personality of their leader, and that's Coach Venables. And they're attacking. Um, they you can see that uh, that they're they're enjoying playing for him. They uh, they'll mix in some man, some zone. Uh, but the one thing they're constantly going to do is is get hats to the football. And so. Um, Again, big challenge. Uh, we're looking forward to get on the road. We've played back-to-back nail biters versus these guys, and and uh, don't expect anything less uh, when we go go out to Norman. So, with that, questions. So, you know, 
start with some, some injury stuff. I mean, Doug's status, Hudson's status, and also along with Doug, what what is Nick Malone meant in being able to fill in for You're Wyatt? You're really, really stretching right here with these three questions at once. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. So uh, I'll try here. Uh, let me let me uh, let me go. Start with the all right. Start with the first one here. Got to remember right. them. First. Yeah, I got it. I'm, I'm working on it. So Doug, uh, so Doug uh, moved around today. Um, we'll know more as the week goes. Um, I think he's questionable, but it's but definitely could play. Okay. Um, and then um, from on Hudson, Hudson could have played in an emergency on the in the game on Saturday. He practiced a little bit last week. Uh, I don't think he's 100%. Uh, so we made the decision that we weren't – he dressed and what could have been ready. Uh, but we made the decision not to play him till he gets 100%. Uh, he practiced today. We're hopeful that he can uh, he can really help us. You know, he's big playability. And, and so we're hopeful that he can play. Um, but he's dealing with an ankle. And, you know, some of those times they just take a little while. And then uh, – Nick has played just – Malone's played a ton of football for for us. You know, that was his best game of his career um, on Saturday. Really uh, in pass pro in the run game, um, did, did – uh, played really well. And, you know, he's played now in, I think, five five of our nine games, quite a few snaps on the offensive line. He's played in every game, whether at tackle or tight end. So, uh, he's versatile, very smart, um, plays on our, our field goal team, plays on our punt team. And uh, and so he's a guy that's positioning himself. Really, he he's got an opportunity to, to go play. You know, after another year, he's got an, he's got an opportunity to go play at the next level. Had a tight end leading in receiving, and if it happens here, it'd be the first time in thirty three years. You talking about for the year? Yeah. yeah no, I haven't. I, well, I say this: we we had the Amaro kid at Texas Tech my last year, and he got but he got hurt. Um, he got hurt. He he probably would have been our leading receiver that year, but he got hurt. And then he came back the following year for Cliff, and, and I think he was their leading receiver before he got before he got drafted there with the Jets. Um, but no, this uh, probably not. You know, I'd have to think about it. But right off the top of my head, John, no. Cole's averaging twelve yards a catch. You're getting the ball down the field to him. Yeah, right? we're trying to. You know, we tried the other night. He had a great run, run after catch on the touchdown. Um, he really missed time to jump on the first uh, kind of downfield throw we had on the opening drive. Garrett threw a nice ball, and, and uh, Cole just kind of missed time to jump for it. Um, but we are, you know, there's things that he's got to continue to work on. He's got to, um, he's got to play big sometimes in the pass game. He's he's improving in the run game. You know, he's got to hold his lines, and but we're going to continue getting the ball. He's a matchup problem. He's got great ball skills. Um, some of the things we're doing in the run game it leads to so, to tight ends having success. You mentioned a lot of the offseason about him being a pass catcher, and mm -hmm. so it's not too much surprising to that end. But is it exactly where the plan was? Because it's also kind of been a roller coaster with some of the receivers this year, and now Hudson mm -hmm. being hurt. Like, is this ideal, or would you rather? No, uh, no. I think that going into the year, I really, we really felt like that Cole and Devin were going to be um, the two guys that had played played quite a bit of football. Uh, we knew we had talent at receiver, but we. We knew there was going to be some ups and downs, and like you said, a little bit of a roller coaster, and that happens with young players. Um, but we felt like that Cole and Devin would probably be our most targeted guys, and they they've been to this point. Um, and I think we've left some, we've missed them on some throws, you know, and 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 they've got to do some better things in the route game. But I'm not I'm not surprised that those two guys are probably our most targeted. Can you live with the? 50% pass completion percentage if you're throwing it downfield. I mean, if these were screens, you'd be really – Yeah, you know, so we are. We're throwing the ball down the field quite a bit more. Um, you know, and uh, I just I just felt like, why well, throw it underneath if our completion percentage is about the same? So, like, I'm just like, let's, 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 throw, let's throw it further down the field. And, uh, no, and with that, you know, we've uh, – we are calling more down the field. So now we should be closer to 55 to 60 percent. And and that's the next step for Garrett. He's playing really well. Um, he's got a – there's two things. It's from a fundamental standpoint, you know, like he's got to get his body aligned. Um, and he falls off to the left sometimes. we got to get those two things fixed. Um, and he does it. He's just – He's not as consistent with it as, you know, he threw as good a ball as you're going to see anybody throw all year to press it on the touchdown. Um, but a couple of those two fundamental issues, he's got to 
correct and he's got to correct them all the time. The second thing is is he's got to he's got to take some of the 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 heat off. He can throw a change up every once in a while. You know, like yeah, yeah. It's you know a lot of fastballs. So we got to take off. Um, we got to we got to relax on that a little bit. He picked 14th in the league at the preseason and asked players about it, and they've all come back and said it's provided a chip on the shoulder, and you're still bringing that up at times. How much was it this summer, and how much do you still use that as motivation? Well, I think, uh, you know, motivation is important. I've kind of enjoyed reading some of, um, you know, with the passing of Bob Knight, kind of reading some of his thoughts on motivation. Some of them are simple but true. Uh, but, you know, I think that it's something that, that we keep in front of them because until the year's over, like, we still have something to prove. And it all starts with that. That's what people thought of us. You know, that's what they thought of of this program at the start of the year. And and we're, we're out to prove that wrong right up until the end. And so that's kind of – we're using it as motivation. It's the truth, though. I mean, that's where we were picked. It's not like we're – uh, embellishing on that, that we were picked to finish last, and Oklahoma was picked to finish in the top three, and so um, that's what it is. So in the sense of motivation, obviously last year, a big win for the program, first time with both in the Big 12, but Oklahoma leaving the conference, anything to this could be the last time for a long time West Virginia has a chance at Oklahoma? No, nah, we just got a sour taste in our mouth about the last time we were there. You know, we got beat on a walk-off field goal. Felt like we were in control of the game and uh, with an opportunity to win it. And uh, and we turn we we have turned it over on downs, and then they win it late. And so that's really the motivation. I know y'all get you know, um, yeah. We, somebody or Tony was asking me about the schedule when it got released last week, and I was like, I don't really care. You know, like who I don't care if we, who we play in our league or you know I don't care if we play all of them or none of them. I don't care that Texas or Oklahoma's leaving. I really don't care. Um, and I don't mean that bad toward Texas or Oklahoma. It's just like, all right, who's in our league? Uh, you know, commissioner's going to take care of that. We're in pretty good – we're positioned pretty well. And whoever we have to play, uh, hopefully we don't have to do back-to-backs on the West Coast. You know, other than that, I don't really care. You, know, you, you came into the season and there was a lot of questions about your future, yet you played and wound up having a number of freshmen as key, key members of your team. I mean, that, that – uh, the emphasis on playing freshmen, using freshmen, and recruiting freshmen. Uh, it was someone whose future is questionable. Uh, yeah, talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, I don't think it was anything deep. You just play your best players, you know, and I think you you want to – you know, if you have a choice between talent and experience, and I'm not the only coach you'll, you'll hear say this, if you have a choice between talent and experience, you know, you're going to take talent. You know, and and you're gonna they're gonna take some lumps. There's there's gonna be some lessons, sometimes hard lessons that that those young players have to learn. But you want to play talent. Um, and I felt good. I felt I feel really good about our evaluation process, especially on the into positions where we've been leaning on young players. Um, and so there was it wasn't a whole lot of deep thought put into it. Is they got in some of them here in the spring, some of them in fall camp. It was clear that they were talented. Um, and let's put them in a position where they can have success, where their confidence can continue to grow. And then when we got to really lean on them, let's lean on them. You guys, you have, I mean, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're explosive players. I mean, I've seen them wait. Trey and Ray. Yeah, so if you look at it, mostly oh. offensive skill positions is kind of where, we, where we're playing them. And uh, I think that bodes well. Um, you know we've got to we got to do some things after season to retain them. That's just the world we live in. But when you look at it, you know Hudson's a redshirt freshman, and and he's not just a feel good feel good story. He's a real player. Um, and then Jaheim White, um, I'm zero surprised that he's kind of burst on the scene. He's he's really talented. Traylon Ray, um, he's doing all this, and he played really well on Saturday, and he didn't even have a spring ball, and he got here halfway through the summer, um, and so. He's going to be a special player here. Uh, Rodney is really good with the ball in his hands. And after an offseason, he gets stronger and, and really learns how to run routes. He's even going to be better. Um, and so – and we feel good about our young offensive linemen we have in our program too. Um, and so – and then on defense with Ben Cutter, and if Josiah Trotter was was healthy, he'd be playing as a true freshman. Um, and so there's, there, there's guys. And here's the other thing. I think sometimes like – we 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 forget guys if they're not playing immediately. Like everybody's past different. Like some of these guys that are redshirting um, are going to be are going to be really 
really good players here. Like just thinking about James Hurd. Like James Hurd is is red shirting just because he needs the physical maturity, but he's going to be a great player. You know, it's just a matter of when, not if. And like I could talk the same about Johnny Williams or Nick Cray or people like that. Um, so we feel really good about our freshman class. Um, and um, but I'm not surprised those offensive skill guys are are playing and they're starting to be productive. Are you not doing the juice award anymore? Yeah, we are. I shouldn't. I, I, I didn't. Here's. I felt guilty because I didn't announce it. Um, here's. I, I'll go back a couple of weeks, Mike. Since you asked. No. So like, I, I need to. So, uh, Ronan Swope, who is our 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 third string punter, he's got he's got he's almost a permanent juice award. All right, winner. And then Nick Cray is is done a really nice job. And then this week, Nate Flower from Fairmont. Um, uh, a red shirt, a true true freshman. He's red shirting from Fairmont. So, I don't know why I'm on it. You called me out. You you were exactly right. And what I did, I got it written down on my sheet, and I was like, I forgot it last week, so I better not do it this week. But you gave me an opening. Less than smart, Alec. Hold, hold on, Mike. He had a question. Hold on. You get back. Now. Yeah. Um, like the hybrid term for guys, like you know, defenders. You think you know, um, linebackers, safeties, and linebackers, but like. The way you're using Gallagher, it's not like a tight end receiver, like a running back receiver, too. I'm not sure it's perpetual, but it does seem to fit right now. But is that a guy who in years could have a number of carries and receptions, or is he going to gravitate toward receiver and this is just the best way to use him? Yeah, so what what we're doing right now is just putting him in the best position to be successful. Now, he played – if you go back and look at the snaps in the game, he played more true receiver in this game. Um, And – you know, there's just a number of things that have to go right for a receiver to get the ball. So we called several pass plays for him, and for whatever reason, and same with Cole, it just the ball didn't find him. Um, and but when you hand it to him, you can definitely determine they're going to get it. Um, I think he's going to be a guy as he progresses um, and really learns how to run routes. He's going to be good in the middle of the field. He's going to be a guy that uh, that we can run some option routes with and and things like that once he gets a, a better feel for the top of the routes. But well, I think as his career progresses, we're going to get him the ball, uh, handing it to him. You know, I think he's a guy too that we can use at some some different. You know, he can play some wildcat and some things like that once he gets a little thicker because he played all that in high school. You know, that's what he. That's kind of what his background is. He's he's got great ball skills, which you see a lot of times in guys that that handle the ball a lot in basketball. And uh, and so, and and he's he he understands sports. He understands like he's a quick learner. And so uh, we'll continue to find ways, but um, but he, we are being creative right now. But he is getting better as a receiver. Down the line, um, I don't, uh, is there a room for White and Donaldson on the field at the same time? Yeah, we tried to do it the other day, and then um, CJ got stepped on, and he's fine. But we were going to play a little bit more two back um, in the game, and so I think time and place. It just depends on you know how how defenses play different personnel groups, you know. Um, you know, you've heard me say this before. Is like if you're going to play both running backs, they just got to block. You know, because you're taking you're taking somebody out, somebody else out of the game, so they got to be able to block. Mike, do you have a follow up? I'm sorry. Question: um, Oliver, true freshman, he's steamrolled a guy on kickoff return. It made great play. Is he a four game guy or? So I, I got to make a decision. Yeah, he's played four games right now, and so we got to. Um, I'll meet with him later on today, and we got to we got to figure that out. Um, but he he's played. He started on three. He started on three units. Yeah, and he's and he's done that two weeks in a row. Um, and I like him. Like I really like. He's a really good football player. You know, he started both ways in high school, and he's physical. And and uh, that was a great play. That's best by far the best play we had on special teams the other night was the one he had. Does play? Is he just a special team or do you try? Nah, to get him? you know. Then we we would if he's gonna play, we we need to use him some too. You know, I think it's only fair to him. So, um, but I don't have an answer for that yet. Best portal class that you've gotten. I mean, you've got a well, lot I don't of know that we. Yeah, we, it's so young in it. You know, we've had some hits. We got some misses too. Uh, I'm not going to talk about those, but like, you know, it's, I mean, it's like it's like anything else. Um, I'll tell you what we've done. What you know, and, and you think about it. Um, defensively, is Beanie Bishop. Um, Day Day Hawkins, um, Tyron Bradley, Anthony Wilson. Um, we added guys that are making contributions, but they've been really good in the locker room too. You know, which I think you know that may be as important as anything. And like Beanie, like just use him as an example. Like he's done a really good job from a mentoring standpoint. 
and I think I've talked about this maybe a little bit before, but um, he's done a really good job from a mentoring standpoint. So I think you live, and, and as you go through this, this is still relatively new. You figure out kind of what your niche is, um, and then not only what type of player you're looking for, what type of – what type what's the best fit. And we've made some mistakes in the last couple of years, but we've also had some big hits too. And uh, I think we've, we've got a better kind of system for what our hits, why we made, why we hit on some kids, why we missed on some kids, you know. And so uh, when it opens up again in the not too, not too uh, distant future, I think we'll, uh, we'll have a lot more hits than we did misses. I don't know. I'm not in that mode yet. <laughs> I think, in, in fairness, but I'm gonna say yes. I just think, yeah. I don't think. I think you're gonna see this where you're gonna have, you know, probably a third of your rosters turned over every year. You know, and, and I may even be conservative with that. Um, and so, I think you got to work to retain your best players. You're not gonna retain every player that you want to retain. That's just the. That's kind of what it is. And then in your position and needs, you're gonna have to be really aggressive. And I think too is, is you know, I think that you'll see more people that are a little bit younger. You know, like it's been a lot of older kids, but um, some younger guys, um, you know, there's some real – like Tommy is a great example. Like he's a kid that didn't play, but red-shirted, and he's having a big impact, you know. So I think, you know, those are some of the lessons you learn as well. Okay, thank you. Is that it? All right, thank you all.